Hello, welcome to my channel. Today I thought I'd show you something a little different, a way to use your art for something useful. You can use your art to decorate many useful things, and in this case I've used it to decorate a bag that I've sewn out of um, unbleached canvas, a drop cloth actually, and it contains my laptop, my purse and a phone, so I'm ready for the coffee shop. You can use your art to decorate many other items such as pillows or placemats, um, just about anything you can think of really. I used a grocery store shopping bag for a pattern and before I sewed my pieces together I wrapped the front of it round a 9x12 canvas panel and stitched it at the back to keep it taut. I started painting straight away without making any kind of preparation on the surface. Usually I buy panels which are already gessoed and that gives me a smooth surface to paint on. In this case the paint did um, sort of bury itself in the weave. And I think next time I will prepare um, an area, not the entire area, but some of the area where the main flowers will be with gesso to give me that smooth surface. Now I did put the drop cloth in the washing machine before I cut my pieces out to pre-shrink it. I, th I feel that's important to do because um, it would be awful to waste all your energy on doing a painting and then have it shrink the first time somebody tried to wash the bag. And these bags are washable and um, once you've got um, acrylic paint on them there's not much that will take that off. It's there for the duration. And um, so I consider this pre-shrunk and washable. I used primary yellow, French ultramarine blue, sap green, titanium white, and I think I might have uh, used some alizarin crimson in there to give me a sort of greenish background. I, I didn't want anything too strong and because the, the uh, canvas wasn't prepared, um, it was hard to to sort of make a, um, my usual blurry background. I had no hope of doing that. So I just scrubbed away with the brush as well as I could to sort of mix the paints because I usually do quite a lot of mixing on my canvas. And perhaps I would have done better in this case to mix the paint before I put it on since I hadn't prepared the surface. But you live and you learn, don't you? And to me, everything's an experiment anyway. I just wanted enough background colour for the rose spray. I'm only doing a couple of roses and some buds. It's not a huge um, picture. It's not a full 9 by 12 painting. It's simply a rose spray on a greenish background. That's how I'm thinking of it. The first thing I do is use alizarin crimson to place my roses. This is the base of the rose and I'll pull titanium white which I'll mix with the alizarin crimson to give me some pink and pull in pink petals from the outer edge in toward the centre, like this. And later I'll go in with straight titanium white and put a highlight on those petals. But um, for the petals that you don't see the entire petal, you're looking sort of down on it, I use a sideways swipe. And the ones at the base of the rows that are closest to us, I pull those in from the outer edge in toward the center of the rows, in toward the base of the rows. And once you get those strokes in your mind, um, it's quite easy to paint a rose. It took me quite a while, I tell you, I always think you need to paint a hundred roses. When you've done a hundred roses, you'll be pretty good at it, believe me. For leaves, I put on an initial blob of paint and then I pull in the edges 
in toward the center. I use the same stroke that I use for rose petals on the leaves. I pull in my leaf shapes and my petal shapes from the outside edge in toward the center. I always do it that way. I, I very, very rarely do it any other way unless I accidentally put a blob on the paper and it looks leaf-like. I might sometimes leave that without doing anything else to it. But that is so rare, believe me. Sometimes you have these happy accidents, Bob Ross used to call them, didn't he? And um, I always take advantage of those if they happen. They don't happen too often though. You generally have to do a little work and practice a little bit before you get things how you like them. But when you're working with acrylic paint, you can always change things up. You can always gesso a patch out and treat it exactly as though it were fresh canvas and repaint a section of your painting if there's anything that you don't like. Don't be discouraged. I've done that many, many a time. This is where I go in and put a highlight, straight white titanium. And um, it dries, as it dries, it gets a little darker and you might have to reinforce that. I sometimes go in two or three times to keep that brightness of the highlight. Um, in this particular case, I found the whole thing dried down quite, and I suppose it's because there was no uh, gesso base and something to do with the fabric itself, the unbleached canvas. I find the whole painting a little on the um, quiet side, let's call it. I don't want to call it dim because it isn't dim. It's just slightly quieter than usual. It ha doesn't have the same vibrancy that my regular paintings on a gessoed panel have. Um, so that's something to be considered. And I think the next painting I do, which will be either a hydrangea or a geranium, um, I will put gesso just where the flower head is and where some of the leaves will be. And um, that will give me a smoother surface and keep the vibrancy of the painting. I think that will help. dot in the stamens using something dark it could be um, raw umber or raw sienna not raw sienna maybe um, alizarin crimson and then I put something a little brighter on the top sometimes mix alizarin crimson with primary yellow and just put that orange on the top for a highlight I have shown you this a little sooner but I'm painting with acrylic paint titanium white primary yellow, raw sienna, raw umber, French ultramarine blue, sap green and alizarin crimson. I'm also using a three quarter inch flat, half inch flat, a liner brush and a, a powder brush that I get from the dollar store for a blender. Not that I've done that much blending in this particular um, painting. I left this second rose a little bit late, to tell you the truth. I was going back and forth in my mind. Should I paint one rose and two buds? Should I paint two roses and a couple of buds? What should I do? And um, then I finally made up my mind to put in a second full-blown rose, uh, slightly in shadow of my star rose. I like to paint these old-fashioned shrub roses. Um, they're not quite a wild rose. They're not as simple as a wild rose, but um, they're not as elegant as the roses that you buy um, from the florist. And 
they remind me a lot of a rose garden that I knew as a child. And it was full of these big, fully opened, um, flourishing roses with the most heavenly scent. When the roses were in bloom in the summertime, the whole place just smelled so beautiful. My mother used to gather some and bring them into the house and the house just had a lovely scent in those days. So I see I've already put the thorns in and when I do that I just draw a straight line perpendicular to the stem that I'm working with and um, fill in the little, make a little triangle, fill in that and it looks like a thorn and I put them one on one side of the stem and then the next one on the opposite side. Uh, I think that's how they grow. They may not grow that way, that's just the way I paint them. And to me, that looks pretty realistic. I usually manage to get quite a bit of colour in my stems and I almost always add alizarin crimson to them because it's a transparent paint. It lets the other colour shows through and I find that it adds depth to my painting. Every painting I do will have alizarin crimson in it somewhere. Um, and if I do a stem, it almost always has alizarin crimson. French ultramarine blue is another transparent paint that gives you that depth. Uh, when you use it, it's almost like using a, a glaze. So I think that's about it really. Um, it's a nice little rose spray. It looks good. It doesn't cover the entire um, front of the bag, but I think it I think it's a nice size and that's something that's kind of important and I'm not always that good at is proportion. You really need something that will look good in the middle of the bag. I painted this a little bit high I think and I could have come down several inches and it might have looked a bit better but I didn't and I'll do better next time. That's what I tell myself. So there it is. I think that it turned out quite nicely. It wasn't the easiest thing to paint without that uh, gesso background. And I might do that next time. And there's the bag, all finished. Uh, there are lots of patterns online uh, for you to follow, lots of YouTube videos on this. So I, I'll let you find your own. And um, I've got my laptop in that bag. There's loads of room left over for a purse and a phone and I'm ready to go anywhere to the beach, um, to the park, to the coffee shop, whatever. I hope you enjoy the video. Please like, share and subscribe if you did. That helps my channel grow. I'd be very grateful for that and leave any comments for me, any ideas, anything that you want me to paint and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.